All right, we are finally getting back to our study of the large catechism. And um, we are starting a little late because I'm having te technical difficulties. I'm going to have to get a new microphone here, um, but so be it. That's all right. Um, we are on page 400... 15, if you're using the big Book of Concord, page 415. If you are using one of the littler ones, um, third petition, that's right. Page 130, okay, so 130 if you have one of the little ones. Okay, apologies for starting late. Sometimes technology does not cooperate so all right so finally getting back to the large catechism we are in the midst of the lord's prayer we have already covered the uh introduction in the first and second petitions and now we are at the third petition thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven so far we have prayed that god's name be honored by us and that his kingdom triumph among us. All right, so those are the, the first pe two petitions, right? That God's name be honored among uh, or by us and that his kingdom triumph among us. In these two points is summed up all that deals with God's honor and our salvation. We receive God as our own and all his riches. But now arises a need that is just as great we must firmly keep God's honor and our salvation and not allow ourselves to be torn from them. Okay, now we can stop there. We must firmly keep God's honor and our salvation and not allow ourselves to be torn from them, which means you can be torn from them. How? How can you lose those things? Maybe. What's that? Okay. By not honoring the Lord, right? By not holding fast to the salvation that he delivers to us. Okay. So, um, Blessed, he, blessed is he who hears the word of God and what? Keeps it. What does that mean? You're holding on to it. You're holding fast to it. So where, as we've talked about, okay, if we, if we want to remain in the faith, where do we need to be? We need to be where Christ is, right? In the word. In God's house where the word of God is being preached, to where the, the forgiveness of sins is being delivered, where we receive Christ in with an underbread and wine, right? That's how you remain steadfast. Now, salvation is always God's work, correct? Entirely God's work. But if we are to remain in the faith, is there something we actively need to be doing? Yeah, actually. <laughs> Being where Christ is there to deliver those things to us and sustain us in the faith. Uh, it's still a passive, receptive faith in that in that way, but you can choose not to come to church, correct? You could choose not to spend time in God's Word. You could choose to see, oh, well, the Lord's Supper is being celebrated, but, eh, golly, we, we have that a lot. I must skip out on that one. Uh, that's right, I had it last week. Uh, or, uh, you know, Christmas Eve, well, I... I had it this morning. Forget it. I'm not coming. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bother receiving it again tonight, right? Uh, as if you haven't sinned in between. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Sixty-one in good government is not only any good government. It is not only necessary that there be those who build and govern well. It is also necessary to have those who defend, offer protection, and maintain it firmly. So, 
in God's kingdom, although we have prayed for the greatest need, for the gospel, faith, and the Holy Spirit, that he may govern us and redeem us from the devil's power, we must also pray that God's will be done. For there will be strange events if we are to abide in God's word, or God's will. We shall have to suffer many thrusts and blows on that account from everything that seeks to oppose and prevent the fulfillment of the first two petitions. Okay, so, the Lord is the king, right? We are brought into the kingdom. Well, when you're part of the kingdom, under the king's authority, now you got to carry out the king's will, right? And if we are to carry out the king's will, you think there might be some who don't want us to carry out the king's will? <laughs> yep, the devil, the world, and our sinful flesh are constantly warring against us. Uh, so even if we know God's will, doing it is a whole other matter, isn't it? It's not as easy as just saying, yeah, I know what the right thing is to do. You actually have to do it. Um, this is one of the things that's kind of interesting. Uh, the the younger generation coming up right now, the uh, a lot of the, the the studies talk about how altruistic they are, right? They want all of these wonderful things, but them um, having the the right attitude about it is credited to them as if they have done something, <laughs> like. Oh, well, I want things to be that way. Well, what are you doing to accomplish it? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about it. I'm, I'm raising awareness. <laughs> Great. Does nothing, right? If you want something to actually happen, you have to do something. Uh, now, of course, it's not young people that are the only ones that do this. This is something that we are all quite capable of. We can talk a lot about missions and not do anything. We can talk about confessing the faith and remain silent when the opportunity comes. Um, doing, you know, is the harder thing. Um, all right, let's go on to 62 here. No one can believe how the devil opposes and resists these prayers. He cannot allow anyone to teach or to believe rightly. It hurts him beyond measure to have his lies and abominations exposed, which have been honored the most fancy, uh, 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 which, um, which have been uh, honored under the most fancy sham uses of the divine name. It hurts him when he himself is disgraced, is driven out of the heart, and has to let a breach be made in his kingdom. Therefore he chafes and rages as a fierce enemy with all his power and might. He marshals all his subjects and in addition enlists the world and our own flesh as his allies. All right. So we pray, oh, you know, we're just, we're just praying the Lord's Prayer. No big deal, right? Well, you're going to get the devil's attention here, aren't you? Because he knows you are praying against him. And when we pray against Satan, what's he going to do? He's going to go to battle against us. So it hurts him beyond measure to have his lies and abominations exposed, which have been honored under the most fancy sham uses of the divine name. Satan loves loves to use the things that appear to be Christian and to fill them with false messages, fill them with lies. This is why we must always be on guard against this. We cannot simply go, well, you know, they're you, they got a Bible. That's, they're, they're doing the right things, right? Probably not. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we hope so, but let's check, you know, uh, go into a Christian bookstore. Not that those exist much anymore, but uh, 
mostly it's online, right? But, well, it's a Christian book. It's going to be safe. It's going to be good, right? Well, it could be quite dangerous, actually, because it could be using the divine name of God to teach lies, to teach falsehood. Okay. Um, so then Satan is warring against us, but then he enlists the world, and he enlists our own flesh against us. Um, your sinful flesh doesn't want you to do God's will. There's a battle that has to be waged. This is what St. Paul talks about in Romans 7, right? The good I would, I would do not. The evil that I would, uh, that I keep on doing. O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this, right? So this is, this is the reality we live in. Now, that does not mean, well, can't help it. Got my sinful flesh. No, it means you've got to go to war against your sinful flesh. You've got to put to death your sinful desires by confession and absolution, by repentance, by taking it to the Lord. All right, 63. For our flesh is in itself lazy and inclined to evil. Now, that might be the truest thing Luther wrote in the whole book here. <laughs> Our flesh is in itself lazy and inclined to evil. Boy, howdy. That's true. Uh, even though we have accepted and believe God's word. All right. You've come to faith in Christ. Why, why are you still so slow to do God's will? Uh, that's all of us, isn't it? Why do you still sin? Well... Yeah, because we have this sinful flesh that is inclined towards evil. And, and doing God's will requires effort. Uh, the world, however, is perverse and wicked. So he provokes the world against us, fans and stirs the fire so that he may hinder and drive us back, cause us to fall and again bring us under his power. So, uh, well, let's keep going. Such is his will, mind, and thought. He strives for this day and night and never rests a moment. He uses all arts, wiles, ways, and means that he can invent. <laughs> um, what are the tools that Satan uses to tempt, to distract, to deceive, You name it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is why, okay, we get this wonderful new technology that comes along. It doesn't matter what the technology is. There can be all kinds of good we can do with it. Satan is going to corrupt and seek to cause to use that for destruction, right? The Internet is this thing that fantastic uses, right? Amazing things. The gospel is able to be shared with people across the world. You have access to the early church fathers and their writings at the, the touch of a couple uh, keystrokes. Uh, you've got all kinds of resources for the study of scripture. Yeah, that's true. Man, Satan knows how to use this thing too. Um, you know who... <laughs> If you search a theological question, what if, if you're just kind of generic person doing this search, what's the most likely um, organization that's going to have the first answer? The Mormons. You know why? Because they have put pumped a lot of money into it, and they know how to work the algorithm, and they want the eyeballs well it's the church of Jesus Christ of latter day saints it's Christian right no no it's not because you have the wrong Jesus so we have to uh, we have to understand it doesn't really matter what the, the technology is what the thing is right money money is not bad but Satan uses it for bad Right? Family. Family's great. It's a good thing. Satan can use that. 
anything and everything he twists and corrupts and tries to use to deceive and to uh, cause us to, in any way, shape, or form, um, fall away from faith in Christ. Well, because Satan would corrupt that too. <laughs> All right, keep going. Uh, our, our head fund, yeah, we got, you know, anyway, okay. Um, if we would be Christians, therefore, we must surely expect and count on having the devil and all his angels and and the world and as our enemies. Ah, but I don't want to have all those enemies. Well, tough luck, you do. It's not a choice. You don't get to be like, well, I'm going to play on easy mode, right? Like the with the with the boys with their video games. I'm going to, oh, I'm going to play on easy. I don't want to play on hard. Sorry, Satan doesn't play that way. All right. Okay, so we will have these enemies. They will bring every possible misfortune and grief upon us. For where God's word is preached, uh, accepted, or believed, and produces fruit, there the Holy Cross cannot be missing. And let no one think that he shall have peace. He must risk what ever he has upon earth, possessions, honor, house, and estate, wife, children, body, and life. I think this guy ripped off the uh, the author of uh, A Mighty Fortress with that line there. I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's, okay, so what is Luther saying here? There's going to be a battle, right? You don't get a choice if you're going to be engaged in the battle or not. Um, life under the cross means that there will be suffering. Um, so let no one think that he shall have peace. He must risk whatever he has upon earth. Possessions, honor, house, and estate, wife, and children, body, and life. Now, this hurts our flesh in the old Adam. The test is to be steadfast and to suffer with patience in whatever way we are assaulted and to let go whatever is taken from us. We don't like to let go. We want to hold on to the stuff that we have. We want to clench our fists around it and hold it tight and not let it go. But here's the way it works in God's kingdom. You got to have open hands. If you have open hands, first of all, the Lord is able to place more in your hands. But he's also to, able to take things out of your hands and place them somewhere else. If you have open hands, well, Satan is going to try to take those things from you, but you couldn't prevent him by clenching your hands anyway. <laughs> uh, but if you have those open hands, you're able to you're, you're ready and willing to receive from the Lord. You're trusting the Lord. You're not trying to control things. You're trusting in the one who does control things. Uh, that's hard, though, isn't it? Because I'm a control freak. I like to be in control of things. I don't want to give over control. But I'm not actually in control anyway, even when I think I'm in control. So living with those open hands and trusting the Lord, and if, if something is taken away from us, well... And then we, we uh, give glory to God. If he entrusts something to us, we give glory to God. Um, if somebody else needs what we have, we help them out, give glory to God. Okay, questions, thoughts? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, let no one think he's going to have peace in the sense of not being attacked, not, be, not being under assault by Satan. Um, now, we do have peace with God, right? And we have peace with one another through Christ. Um, but in the midst of that peace, we still are under assault and under a relentless attack by Satan. So there is, at the same time, peace and no peace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Right. Right. And that's, I th- that's one of the hardest things, isn't it? We, we don't even have peace within ourselves um, because we're at war within ourselves. And uh, no amount of counseling can give you that peace. Uh, that only comes by the Holy Spirit being at work to where, yep, I'm still at war with myself, but I, even, even, even as I'm at war with myself, I, I have the peace of God which comes from outside of me. It doesn't come from within. It comes from outside of me. So as we receive Holy Communion, we have peace because we have Christ. He gives us his peace, his righteousness. He's the Prince of Peace. As we confess our sins, we go, I I don't have peace. And the Lord says, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace. So it only comes from outside of us, not from within. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's really interesting, you know, the, 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 even the, the, the understanding of what is faith. Rather, so when, when you look at faith as I'm going to have so much faith that I'll tell God how it's going to be, that's, that's not actually faith. I don't know what that is, but it's not faith. Faith is looking to God and going, thy will be done. Whatever it is that you choose to give or bring, well, then I will walk in that. I will trust in you. And uh, uh, faith does not demand of God. Faith trusts in God. And so, yeah, we can use the same word, and it doesn't mean the same thing. That's where we got to be really, really, really careful too, right? Well, that person was talking about faith. Uh, This has been the new thing, by the way, for politicians. What do they what do they call themselves? A person of faith. What does that mean? <laughs> exactly. Faith in what? Like, okay, great. I you're a person of faith. What what is your faith in? What is your confession of faith? Uh I don't care if you're a person of faith because you could be trusting in demons. I don't care if you're a person of faith. That doesn't mean anything. Tell me what you believe. Tell me who your faith is in, what your faith is in, what is your confession of faith. Don't, don't buy this person of faith garbage. It, it is absolute garbage. Well, that's a person of faith right there. I don't know what faith in, but something. Okay. All right. Goodness. All right. Um, where do, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I also, now this hurts our flesh and the old Adam. It does. It does, doesn't it? It's really hard because we want and we like to control, and it is so hard to let that go. All right. 67. Uh, So there is just as great a need as in all the other petitions that we pray without ceasing. Dear Father, your will be done, not the devil's will or enemies or anything that would persecute and suppress your holy word or hinder your kingdom. Grant that we may bear with patience and overcome whatever is to be endured because of your word and kingdom so that our poor flesh may not yield or fall away because of weakness or sluggishness. Uh, That's a prayer prayer we could pray every day, isn't it? (laughs) Um, We are praying, okay, Lord, uh, you're in control, right? Your, Your kingdom come, but help me to do your will. 
Help me actually to carry that out. Don't let the attacks of Satan keep me from doing it. Don't let the world keep me from doing it. Don't let my own sinful flesh and laziness and selfishness keep me from doing it, but help me to actually do your will. Uh, now, where does actually doing God's will begin? With the Lord. Not with our own desires, but actually with the Lord, and then he helps us to carry that out, right? Gifts of the Spirit. What are gifts of the Spirit? <laughs> yeah, you got what is joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, uh, all of these different, but sometimes people hear that and they're like, okay, I am going to um, Im improve on having um, self-control. That's not how gifts work, actually. <laughs> it has to come from the Holy Spirit, right? If you want to improve on having self-control, how are you going to do it? You've got to pray for it. The Lord gives that. The Holy Spirit works that. Uh, now, when you recognize the lack of self-control, confess that, right? Ask for forgiveness. But it's the Lord. It's the, the fruit, right, that the Spirit brings about. Not, I've got to work towards that. Uh, it's It's brought about by the Holy Spirit doing that within us. Okay, yep. Nope. Okay, all right. If you were at an auction, you would have just bid. <laughs> okay, 68. Look, we have in these three petitions, in the simplest way, the needs that relate to God himself, yet they are all for our sakes. Whatever we pray concerns us alone. As we have said before, we pray that what must be done without, uh, without us anyway may also be done in us. That's a good line, isn't it? What must be done without us anyway may also be done in us. God's will will be done. It will. We're just saying, Lord, we want to be in that. <laughs> we want to be part of that. We want it to include us, that we would do your will also, as his name must be hallowed and his kingdom come, whether we pray or not, so also we, uh, so also his will must be done and succeed. This is also true, even though the devil, with all his followers, raise a great riot, are angry and rage against it, and try to exterminate the gospel completely. But for our sakes, we must pray that even against their fury, his will be done without hindrance among us also. We pray so that they may not be able to accomplish anything and that we may remain firm against all violence and persecution and submit to God's will. Okay, so um, are we going to face those that don't want God's will to be done constantly. Well, that's where it starts. And then you go out the door, and everybody that you see, uh, even, even uh, well, and I, I would say especially, though, especially those that are uh, outside of the church, um, especially those that have a hatred of Christ in his church. And we see that in many ways. Um, when the world rages against the church, what is the church to do? Turtle shell. No, we don't just go into hiding, right? We pray. And then we act according to God's will. All right. 69, such prayer then is to be our protection and defense now. So such prayer then is to be our protection and defense now. Um, we face enemies that we cannot defeat. Christ has already defeated. So why are we trying to win the battle? Go to the one who already is victorious, right? Trust him to win the battle. Uh, it is to repel and put down all that the devil, Pope, 
bishops, tyrants, and heretics can do against our gospel. Let them all rage and attempt their uh, utmost and deliberate uh, and res- and, de- and deliberate and resolve how they may suppress and exterminate us so that their will and counsel may prevail. Over and against this one or two Christians with this petition alone shall be our wall, against which they shall run and dash themselves to pieces. We have this comfort and confidence. The devil's will and purpose and all our enemies shall and must fail and come to nothing, no matter how proud, secure, and boastful they know themselves to be. For if their will were not broken and hindered, God's kingdom could not remain on earth, nor his name be hallowed. Okay, so the devil, the devil's will and purpose, and all our enemies shall and must fail and come to nothing. Yep, we know how it ends. We know who has the victory. We don't have to wonder. We live in the victory. We live from the victory. We live in in anticipation of that final victory. Uh, So when we're under assault, we don't have to go, but how is this going to end? You already know. With victory in Christ. All right. Questions, comments, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is in control of all things, and anyone who would say otherwise is a liar. Yeah. Other other thoughts, questions, comments? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for revealing your will to us in your word. We thank you that you are our Father, that your kingdom comes, and we pray that your will would be done among us just as it is done in heaven. We ask that you would help us uh, to actually carry out your will in our lives. Uh, That even as Satan and his uh, minions work to to battle against us, that uh, we would not give in, that our uh, our sinful flesh, even as it seeks to cause us to be lazy or selfish or act in sinful ways, that we would uh, take that to you receive forgiveness, and be empowered to live as you would have us live. We, we ask that your will be done in us, in our lives, in our church. In Jesus' name, amen.